Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a Hess cycle and specifically we're going to be using enthalpy of formation data. Now this is taken from a 2005 OCR exam paper. The exam paper code was F322. Um, so that was an old spec reference, but we are now on the new specification, and of course this content is 100% appropriate. You'll find though on the new spec papers, for instance, though, the notation has changed ever so slightly down here. So instead of delta HF, it's now delta FH. So they've changed the notation slightly, but it doesn't really change the calculation any way, shape, or form. Now, specifically as well, this question is asking us to calculate the enthalpy change of combustion for an alcohol that in the question was referred to as alcohol J. But we can see here is just C5H12O. We don't know the full structure of it, but that doesn't really matter. And what we've got is an equation given to it above just here, which is actually um, an enthalpy of combustion equation for that unknown structure alcohol J um, and we can tell that it's an enthalpy of combustion equation really really simply because we've got one mole of the alcohol J being reacted and we've got complete combustion products on this side uh, which demonstrate that it was in excess oxygen and everything is in its standard state all right so this is a good example of a question though for an exam because what we're going to be doing is using enthalpy formation data to calculate the enthalpy change of a combustion reaction and what I really want you to realize today is that it doesn't matter that it's a combustion reaction it could be any kind of reaction the important thing is the fact that we have enthalpy of formation data so I'm going to show you how to use that properly just next Okay then, so I've just rearranged uh, the question a little bit, and what I've done is, uh, what I recommend you do for the exam, of course I've just copied it into here, but I recommend you write the equation out again, because if you're going to draw a Hess cycle as a way of answering this question, you really need the question um, to have this bit of equation that we're going to use in the answer space, um, and obviously in the way the question was laid out, it was above the data table, which was a bit frustrating, so it may seem like a time consumer, but I really recommend you do it, because it's a good way to see if you've made a mistake. Um, because in the exam it's really easy to trip up and type the wrong number or something like that. So this is what I recommend anyway. Now, what we're doing here with this now then is we're going to draw the cycle and specifically we're going to concentrate on the use on these enthalpy of formation values. They're all exothermic, but really that's not too important. It doesn't really impact our answer at the moment. So what we're we going to do to get started? Well, what we need to do since we've got formation data is at the bottom Underneath the, underneath the equation at the bottom of the diagram, I need to make sure I've got the elements as they would appear under standard conditions. Now, I don't need to show the state symbols for this, but what I am going to do is make sure they are the correct formulae. And so it's all the elements that appear from the top line. Okay? So we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You don't need to balance it either because there's no marks for that, but this will help us get to the right answer. Now, as well, I'm going to show you the full long-winded way of doing this, but I'll also discuss a shortcut you can take um, when you get to the actual exam yourselves. Now, what we're actually doing here in applying Hess's law is we're going to try and prove that the enthalpy change of a reaction, so remember the question is asking us to calculate this enthalpy change just here across that arrow, the enthalpy change of a reaction is the same, whichever route is taken from reactants to products. So my plan is to go in an alternative route via what you can see at the bottom. However, first off, I've got to label up my diagram in the correct way that shows I'm using the data I've been given. Now, the data I've been given is to form one mole of each of the components on the top line with the exception of oxygen. Oxygen has no standard enthalpy of formation because the definition of standard enthalpy of formation includes that something, that one mole of a substance is formed from its elements and oxygen is an element under standard conditions, and so it doesn't have a value. That's the same for lots of different things like nitrogen, N2, hydrogen, H2. There isn't an enthalpy of formation for those. And in fact, oxygen is the only element to actually have no enthalpy of formation and no enthalpy of combustion either, which is an interesting fact. Now, we need to draw arrows up to this top line. So I'm going to show an arrow coming from the bottom section, taking me straight up here to my unknown alcohol, J. Remember, that was what it was called in the question. Now, that arrow represents my enthalpy change for forming one mole of that, which means my number going onto this line is the minus 366, okay? Now, I label up my other side as well, so one mole of forming the CO2, as you can see up here, is minus 394. So what I need to do, because I've got five moles of CO2 in that top line, is I need to do five times that value, which is nice and simple, really. If that's the value for making one mole, and I'm making five, 
times it by five. It happens five times. And same again for the H2O on this side. So this one here, I've got six moles of H2O, so I'm going to do six times the value to make one mole. Nice and simple. I suppose the only tricky part is which way do I draw the arrows at the start? And I'm trying to teach you here that because it's formation, the arrows point upwards. Okay? Now, this isn't giving me an alternative route to my products from the top line. Because at the moment, one of my arrows, namely this one, is actually pointing the wrong direction. What I really want to happen is I want all my arrows pointing around to the products. And you can see that the CO2 and the H2O ones are pointing up towards the products at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of cross out this one and I'm going to draw a new arrow going around the outside. Now, as you can see, the arrow is now reversed. And as a result, theoretically, any enthalpy change, even if it's an irreversible reaction, the reverse of that reaction would have the equal and opposite enthalpy change. So now I've reversed the arrow, I'm going to reverse the enthalpy change. So now it's plus 366. Nice and simple. And all I need to do is, for this alternative route, I add up all the numbers I've currently got written. So I'm going to add up all together, keep it simple, I'm going to add up the 366, add 5 times minus 394, add 6 times minus 286, because they are my alternative route round to the products, and it gives me my final answer for the question. The final answer itself, and remember this was an enthalpy of combustion, enthalpy change, doesn't matter that we had formation data, it was an enthalpy of combustion reaction, and the correct answer was minus 3320. Now again, in OCR mark schemes, they'll tell the uh, marker just to have a look in the answer space, make sure if the answer is that, award the candidate three marks, and that is what this question was worth, it was worth overall in the exam three marks, which is actually quite a big deal. Now, this value sometimes gets compared to experimental data, and occasionally what they'll say is, this one was a theoretical calculation, and they'll try and compare it to the enthalpy of combustion using the calorimeter. What you will find is that this value is more exothermic or more negative than a calorimeter value, and the reason for that is the calorimeter could get heat loss or it could have incomplete combustion, and that can make those values less exothermic once we get to a calculation. But that's using minus Q divided by N, and I recommend that you actually watch our calorimeter video um, if you want to get any more information on that, because it is a combustion calorimeter that we go through in that. I hope that clears up how to draw a Hess cycle and how we can use it to answer a question in the exam. I'll leave you to the rest of our playlist, and happy revising.